All right. So I'm Chelsea Dean. I'm a founding team member at Tomo Club and I work in the curriculum sector of Tomo Club and work on building uh, what we're doing over here. So that's a little bit about me. I would love to understand uh, what the intentions or what, what are your expectations from today's setting, uh, from today's event, and then we can go forward. And I'll give a brief introduction about everyone, just a rough to and fro before we start. Yeah, I could go first. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Hannah George, and uh, I joined the session because I'm really interested in the social emotional learning space and the uh, well being of the child. And uh, I'm a toy and game designer. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Hannah. Matt, would you like to go next? Yes, I'm happy to welcome everybody. This is going to be super fun. Said, thank you for taking us through the gameplay. My name is Matt Neal. I'm a game evangelist for Tomo Club. I've been working um, in corporate America, training and building companies. And my kids and, and the kids that are around me and the micro schools that we run have grown in dramatic ways. And so gamification, especially if we can give life skills to the next generation, is something that's so amazing. And th today is going to be the best day of Tobo Club ever because – our game guru, the king of fun, is gonna <laughs> is gonna be able to walk us through it. So, I this is literally the very best part of my job and my day. Thank you for sharing that, Matt. Uh, I see Miss Andrea is here, and uh, Kevin or Kevin, can I understand the pronunciation so that I don't get it wrong? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Kevin. Okay. And, uh, I'm a designer and educator. I'm also like curious, like Hannah, to see what this game is all about and how you guys are approaching SEL in gamification. All right. Thank you, Kavit. Miss Kandu. Hi. How are you, Chelsea? Doing very well. So nice to see you here. You too. So I'm Kandria Spivey. I'm a school counselor in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, and I am at the elementary level and I started out working with Chelsea this summer and then life kind of got in the way. So I kind of fell off, but I'm totally, totally interested in Tomo Club. I enjoyed the short time that I was working with you guys. And so I just decided to join today because I actually, since I'm on crutches, my school has allowed me to kind of stay seated today. <laughs> so well, I'm able to actually be online today. Hope you get well, really super mm -hmm. and back on your feet <laughs> with no crutches. But, uh, but thank you for joining, uh, Miss Pivey. Hope if it hope uh, that it will be of value to you as well. Um, and all right, we've got Avinash here as well. Avinash, would you like to go ahead? Yeah, hi guys. Um, I am actually here to understand the deep, uh, you know, science behind how these games have been designed, and. Uh, how we're keeping kids at the center of it to learning is actually engaging and exciting. So yeah, let's see how this goes. All right. Thank you, everyone. And I see Soumya and Manik as well over here. And Soumya and Manik are also from uh, our team. Manik is our co-founder and we got Soumya, our game developer. Would love if you guys can also uh, give a brief introduction. If not, we can jump to Sai, who's going to be the star of the show today. And, uh, He's the he's our head product manager at Tomo Club and one of uh you know the as Matt has already spoken a little bit about him, he's the one driving the learning outcomes in terms of games, right? And like just uh collating all the all the different information and presenting it to uh, presenting it in the form of games at the end of the day. All right. So we've got uh, Sai here and Sai, the stage is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Thank uh, uh, hi guys. Uh, so will I mean I'll, I'll just jump right into things. So this play and learn session is again uh, ex revolved around you know 
एस सी एल गेम्स येस डेफिनेटली बट आई वुड लाइक टू टेक अ स्टेप बैक एन यू लाइक इन सिम सिक्स वेरी फर्स्ट टाइम वी आर डूइंग समथिंग लाइक दिस सम ऑफ अस माइट नो गेम्स सम ऑफ अस माइट नॉट नो गेम्स सो आई वुड रहा दर यू नो लाइक डिस्कस मोर अबाउट लाइक वॉट आर गेम्स एन यू लाइक वॉट आर द फंडामेंटल्स टू बिल्ड गेम्स एंगेजिंग गेम्स एंड देन यू विल डिवेल इन टू अ लिटिल बिट मोर अबाउट एस सी एल गेम्स एफ टाइम पर मच बट आई वुड रहा स्टार्ट विद यू uh the games uh tell me if you can share the screen i am having some trouble oh, just wait so just give me a second i'll just we join the zoom in a second yeah that works okay uh so again to welcome to play and learn with uh, tomokla and so yes so we'll be discussing building sel games but this is just chapter 1 uh where you know like explore more generic audience like you know who are just getting started with game design uh and so uh, in the what we'll be discussing is like you know what are games and why should anybody play games uh but the why part might come in a lot later once we all play the game but uh, first we'll start with you know what are games okay. uh of course yeah what's a game yeah triple h is the game but uh moving you know uh forward from that uh, context a game is any fun activity like you know that challenges us physically intellectually mentally emotionally or creatively right yeah. uh, and you might have noticed you know fun and challenge are uh, colored they have a different color because if a game is not fun or a game is not challenging enough uh, you must find some some other game you know that does uh, these two things for you but uh, the core of being you know any activity that is fun and you know that challenges us can be a game uh, and from this you know we can divide games into a very broad spectrum of things like there are indoor games outdoor games physical games digital games and in the very recent you know last of uh, 5 to 10 years like we have physical games you know which are a merger of physical plus digital interactions we have online games offline games we have serious games you know educational games generally fall into the serious games uh, uh, bracket uh, we have casual games we have hyper casual games and you know you can divide the games based on genre like the list endlessly goes on but bottom line being anything any activity that is fun and challenging can be a game uh we'll just move on to the next slide yeah. so again so some very familiar games that you guys might be knowing and uh, the reason i uh, put all these games are you know, like see like uh, there is a very broad contrast when we come to games pacman is a digital game and the second one you say it's rock paper scissors uh, it's not a digital game but it's a very fun activity that we do and so there are also competitions like you know world tournaments which happen on rock paper scissors uh the third one you know it's like that hand it's like a very old game uh you know sudoku so again it used to be a newspaper thing back then oh, now we have digital forms of the same game again minecraft pokemon go all these are very famous popular games but all of them uh you know like not all of them are skill based not all of them are mechanics heavy not all of them have a story this is chess we don't have any story we just jump right into the game right uh, but again a uh, call of duty and other games like you know they have a lot of story behind that you know that the player has to understand the purpose of the game and then you jump into it so again so you know these are bunch of different games you can put them into different genres different places but all of them have something in common that is where game design fundamentals come into place so today i am i want to talk more about uh, one of the frameworks called octalysis uh, which was which is developed by <clears throat> Yukai Cho, uh, he he has been a very uh, a driving force in game design uh, for almost a decade now. And what he tried to do in this framework is uh, he tried to simplify human behavior, and he helps you know the framework helps us understand what 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 motivates our human action and decisions. Right? Uh, it has a core drive. You know, like we'll jump into that. But uh, the is the basic thing is like why do we do what we do? Uh, and this framework tries to explain that you know like what drives us and this framework can be applied in many different places in business uh, and you know uh, again different applications and everywhere but in games it's much more relevant and that's what we'll be majorly focusing on 
Uh, so this framework, you know, like the very first thing it says, epic meaning and calling. So what epic meaning and calling is, like, uh, it says, uh, it gives us a sense of purpose and meaning that you know, we are a part of something bigger and we are going to make a difference in the world. And how do games achieve this? Games use stories, narratives, you know, they give a lot of context. They put you in uh, simulated environments, you know, like elaborate environments using art. Uh, so these games, you know, like these games give the player the, uh, you know, these narratives and stories and context. These make the player believe that, you know, they're doing something very big. And a very good example of this is The Last of Us. And it has been a sensation in the last you know, couple of years since the game has released, you know, even with the show. So we know that, you know, like as a player, you're trying to, you are the last of remaining people and uh, you're trying to kill all the zombie kind of thing is to basically survive, uh, like survival, but you are the last person alive to you know, save humanity. It's like a very big calling. And that's what uh, Core 1 talks about. Yeah, we can do this. <clears throat> And uh, the second one is development and uh, accomplishment. So again, it's quite simple, you know, like why would we do anything you know, if we are not growing, if you're not progressing, if you're not achieving anything, yeah, but we are going nowhere. And uh, even in a game, when you're playing, uh, you have to relate to all these things. You have to feel that you have grown, you have progressed and you have achieved something. And how do games do this? Like we have progress bars, leadership, uh, leaderboards, badges, so many things in the game that constantly keep telling the player that, you know, they have done something, they have grown, they have learned, they have progressed. Uh, a very beautiful example, you know, uh, racing games like Need for Speed, uh, they use boards, badges, progress uh, uh, reports and all these things, like a, a little, you uh, know, uh, quite well. I mean, all the games do that, but uh, Need for Speed, you know, uh, that's the very first game that comes to my mind when you, you know, talk about progress, you know, you bumping somebody and, uh, you know, going to the first position or the third position. Uh, it, it, it makes you feel alive when you see, like, you know, you have the wrong progress. And cheeks. Uh, the third one is creative, <clears throat> empowering creativity and, you know, feedback. Yeah. So, again, it's quite simple. Uh, like, uh, you know, if a game helps you be creative, you know, if the help, if the game lets you be creative, you would want to play the game for longer. And uh, you also have to be solving problems in the game. And you know, like you also need some constant feedback. Yeah. Uh, so how do games do this? What are game the game design tools? So like games with very minimal training, like you know, they just put you into the game. So that lets you be creative and explore. Yeah. And uh, real-time feedback. So real-time feedback is something that constantly tells the player that, you know, like whether they're doing something right or wrong. And as humans, we definitely need feedback, you know, even though you know, the greatest of the people, we all have mentors, you know, we all have our partners, you know, who kind of give us the support. And that's where the feedback uh, comes in place. And uh, again, problem solving. So, you know, like we have very, uh, uh, many games have hidden tasks, special unlocks, right? And they put you in a situation where you really have to do something uh, creative to solve a problem, say like boss levels, boss fights, that, uh, that many different things that we do. And but the best example uh, which uh, we can talk about is sandbox games like Minecraft, where you just leave the player in an open world in an expansive env uh, environment and you let them do whatever they want, you know, create something, be creative about things, you know, like I think you will discover things, you'll solve problems. Yeah. Uh, and the fourth one is ownership and position. Uh, again, uh, it talks about, you know, like if you own things, you know, if you acquire things in a game, like you are much likely to be a part of it. Yeah. Uh, and again, so uh, the bit like I would like to talk a little bit more about Farmville here. I think it's like, a, it has been a very popular game. Almost everybody knows us. And why is that game such a big hit? Uh, it's because, you know, you are building your own farm. Like you own it. Right. And you have so many collectibles, you can create items, you know, like again, uh, back in the day, like, you know, farm will also let, let other people come and, you know, people come and visit your farms. Like you're showcasing your, you know, your progress, right? So because, and all of this stems from the very basic fact that like you own that farm, you know, it's yours. The same way, like every game, uh, any good game kind of like, you know, does the same thing like that, that it lets you own things. 
uh, and yeah, the so the fifth one is social influence and relatedness. Okay, so this uh, this is where multi uh, <clears throat> MMO RPGs, you know, uh, they come into the picture. Like you know, like very expansive games where you have some 40, 50, 60, hundreds of people playing together, like World of Warcraft. So what it does is like you know, it lets you connect, relax, relate, and interact with people, uh, and it becomes a very important factor. You know, like just from the farm will example, like you know, you let other people come and visit your farm. Uh, that kind of you know is like a very uh, driven social angle that you know and when you go and visit somebody else's farm they are doing better or that not doing as good as you it gives you a sense of gratification and uh, how games achieve this like you know we have expansive game communities you know that is no surprise anybody who plays games or who knows gaming industry uh gaming industry is driven by communities people spend a lot of time of building like you know a uh, rule set guidebooks, uh, onboarding uh, tutorials, like so many things which the game itself doesn't do, and but that communities help other, you know, even the newer players join the game. And we have many things like, you know, it's the group quest, like, you know, you have to do something collaboratively. So all of this comes under social influence and really practice. Uh, and yeah, so the sixth one is scarcity and impatience. So again, so this is not one of the white hat, met uh, white hat methods, but uh, this is something that the games used to uh, make the player you know, feel a little bit more, uh, like, you know, put them on their toes, right? Uh, and they use uh, these uh, sleep, some techniques, like, you know, like fear of missing out for more, uh, and, you know, uh, like we release some clear and very exclusive items. Uh, and, you know, also sometimes we give instant gratification, like, you know, like you can purchase something, you know, you will spend like a dollar and you will get something like, you know, that you might not get uh, say for you know uh, one more month or something if you're playing you know in on a long uh paying way in on a free-to-play basis uh so how do games do this like we have found on timers you know which are saying that you know, do we last uh like 24 hours before this expires so we have to purchase this uh we have like you know, certain keys which are in a very limited number and we have some very exclusive rewards and but they are very limited in number so all of this basically come into and uh, not any specific game, for example, but all the games generally do that. You know, any commercial game out there, like all the games, you know, you see this, uh, these mechanics uh, in any game. Yeah. Uh, the seventh one is uh, unpredictability and curiosity. So this again, you know, the element of surprise is something that uh, retains players, that encourages us to do whatever you are doing. Uh, again, this is a very uh, you know most widely used in gambling games. Uh, but again, open world games like Grand Theft Auto do this very well. You know, like they have hidden challenges. We have very unpredictable outcomes. You know, like we don't know. Like the game is not telling you what would happen, and you do something, and it might not be what you are expecting altogether. Yeah. And uh, the last and final one being uh, loss and avoidance. So uh, again, so this is again a, a black hat technique. If I uh, want to label it, but this. This talks about a human's fear of losing something valuable. Like, you know, see, like the progress that you have made, uh, or like, again, avoiding paying negative consequences, and you know, like you need that safety and security. So, how do games do this? Like, you know, we have checkpoints. Like, you know, you finish say, like some ten minutes of gameplay, you have a checkpoint that saves your progress. But say you don't defeat a boss, you might have to restart the level again. Right. So the uh, loss of progress, and you might rank down. You know, your, your XP might go down. So again, so this is like a very common thing in many of the games, but sometimes it is good, sometimes it's bad, you know, that's very subjective. But these are the eight core drives, you know, that uh, the Ortalysis uh, talks about. Uh, yeah, so now uh, if, you know, we can play the game. Uh, so the idea is that, you know, like we'll play one of our games and I would allow for you, for all of you to identify uh, you know, these core drives in the game. And we can talk more about them, you know, like after the game session. Yeah, so I'm going to share the link in the chat box. Just give me a moment. I'm going to share it right away. Should we all unmute ourselves? Yes, that would be very helpful. And Just then we're going to be jumping to google or whatever our browsers are and when we go into that if everyone keeps their tab open for what that browser is on then we'll have connectivity right yeah thank you matt exactly right so as matt has just said uh when we're logging into this game just click on the link as soon as it opens 
make sure that you're active on the link and your uh, and most of your other uh, you know other links are shut down so that it works at an optimal level all right and let me know if everyone has opened the link and then i'm going to walk everyone through just getting on boarded and then we're going to start with the entire uh, process of the game A quick thumbs up would be really helpful to know if, all right, thank you, Avinash. Now, what you're going to do is first put in your name. Uh, before we get the region, uh, before we set the region, would love to uh, understand where everyone is from. Radha, Kavin, uh, Miss Candria, Hannah, would love to know where uh, exactly in the world are you located so that we can set the region for you. I'm in India itself, Bangalore. Okay, yeah. perfect. Me, Bangalore. Okay, all right. I am in the United States, but I'm not sure because I'm on my school um, internet. Okay. It may not let me open it, so I'm just still trying to work on that part real quick. All right, sure. So we'll uh, choose it. We'll choose the region as Europe. All right. Let me know if that's done for everyone. And we'll select the build as player. And click on connect. And I'm going to give the give you the room ID right away. Uh, so do I run this in the browser or do I run the downloaded version or you can if you have the downloaded version or if you have been able to download the uh, game then you can play it on the, on the downloaded one yep okay. let me know if everyone has done uh, what's required and then I'm going to share the room ID with everyone so just click on join and let me see. The room number is 5555. Okay. Uh, Chelsea, uh, we can do two different game instances. Mac can be the host for uh, uh, the US folks, and we'll just do one here one for the game. All right. Matt, can you please do that for us? Oh. Uh, it's not letting me, but I'll keep working. You guys just keep moving forward. So what we'll do, uh, Ms. Paivi, is that I'll share my screen so that you'll be able to see uh, how we go about the game. Is that okay, all right? Great. Yeah. Yes, thank because you. Because I think you're Appreciate the only one other than Matt uh, joining from the U.S. today. Do you need me to open up a separate uh, I don't game think session? It, no, that's sure. okay. That'd be uh, you mentioned that uh, we have to click on Perfect. join a game and then it says uh, the room ID is 55. Yes. Oh, it's saying it does not exist. Okay. Why don't so, you to reconnect and see okay. which region it is? Sure. Yeah. One second. Yeah. Uh, same for me, Hannah. The region is India. Mm -hmm. When I join, it says game does not exist. So choose the region as Europe. Okay. Yeah, I think it should work for everyone then. I see Avinash is in and Kavin is in. Okay, I see Hannah is there as well. Just waiting for... Okay, uh, for Radha to join. Radha, will you be able to join us? Yeah, just a minute. Sure, all right. Now I'm just going to walk you through what this entire game is about. So this game is called The Crisis Crew. You are going to be the first responders. You're in an underground facility and, you'll need, and there has been some sort of crisis that has occurred. And you need to get out immediately from these different tunnels, but you'll have to do it collaboratively, right? So you're the first responders, just reiterating it, first responders need to be uh, 
you know, need to be at the top of your game. And you'll have to get out of these this underground facility because there there is a crisis that has happened. All right. So now we're going to be using our arrow keys to move up and down, and we're going to use certain buttons to to manipulate the contraptions. And you will be able to see what these contraptions are as you're playing. But right now on your screens, you will see the instructions there. Okay. Right? So there's a turnstile, there will be uh, the elevator, there will be such certain numbers that you will have to use to get in and out. And uh, yeah, so we're going to start this as soon as we have everyone joining in. I see, all right. So Avinash, uh, Kavin, and Hannah are in one room. Okay. And Sai and Radha are in one room, all right? And we're playing a very simple version of this game and the round is going to be eight minutes long. So you already have experienced players with you. So you don't have to worry if you get stuck anywhere. However, I would request uh, those who are playing, who have already played this before to just take a step back and just try and uh, explore this with those playing it for the first time. All right. So I'm good. First, I'm going to put you into your breakout rooms. Would love for you, everyone, to join the breakout rooms ASAP. And then we'll start the game immediately. Give me a minute. See, coming and all right. Chelsea, also share the screen for the others who are not joining in. They'll be in the main room with me. Oh, that's oh, they will be able to see everything. Yes, that's even cool. Yep, exactly. Just give me a minute. Let me see if I can get Hannah and Kavin, Kavin together. All right, I think the game should start. Just uh, join your room really quickly, and then I'm going to yeah. see you guys. Bye bye. I think you'll be able to see my screen now, right, Ms. Kandra? Yes. All right. So what you're seeing right now is that there are these three players who are trying to figure out what uh, is needed to be done. So all of them have to get to, a, to the end point or to the flag point together. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So what do you think would be like an obvious thing to like what is coming to your mind right away when you see this? Who do they're you they're like they're roadblocks? Yeah. There are roadblocks. There are these different contraptions that need to be opened up. And so like my first question would be like, what tool do I have to like maybe blast it or open mm -hmm. it up? Yeah. I see do you see this? There's a disc like of uh, object there that uh, K is trying to open up. So, what okay. they think, yeah, that's the control panel. Okay. So, the control panel is what is used to manipulate or to use these contraptions. Got you. Yeah. Let's see what the other team is doing. Okay. Okay. There you go. They got there. They got there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now this is going to be the second round. Second level, pardon me. I think, yeah, I think this team has also has completed their uh, round. Great. Let's check out the leaderboard. All right. Okay, so now we're at level two. 
Yeah. Which team would you want to root for? I know it's nice to root for everyone, but just... Uh, probably one since they're behind. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> That's fair. Let's see if they can figure out that there's an interesting mechanic. That oh, they yeah. I like that. Yeah. Hannah's still trying to figure out what's up with it, which is good. Yeah, yeah, That's exactly yeah. what we want uh, them to do. Let's see what the other team is up to. Oh, I don't see them moving. Okay. Oh, there they go. Yeah. Hi, Doug. Hi there. What we're doing right now is that we've del we've uh, completely jumped into the game round now. We had uh, a small introduction to game design and all that in the first half an hour. Now what they're doing right now is playing the game. So what you're seeing uh, on your screen is that there are two players trying to figure out what needs to be done as they're playing this. Got it. Okay. So that's one. And this is the Can the players team. communicate with one another? Yes. OK. And the object is for all three players to make it together. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. It's a, as much of a team game as it gets. So you really need to speak with the others, right? Like until and unless you start coordinating, it just does not happen. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I wonder there... if the kids would notice that the, there's they're racing against time. I know it says it at the beginning, but I wonder if they're paying attention to it. They do. They definitely Okay, oh. I okay, wait. Yeah. And now I am stuck on the other side of the tunnel. No? Okay. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm out, I'm out. Okay, I got one more key. Okay, but uh, we don't, cut. oh, it's like a tunnel. Okay, I'm pressing the tunnels. Okay, can you, oh, wait. Game oh. is paused. Game is paused. Why? <laughs> no, we have to go back. <laughs> Why? No, Chelsea, is the, Chelsea is the big boss here. <laughs> Uh, I would request one of you to share your screen. I didn't want to ruin your game time. So just request oh. one of you to share your screen. And yeah, that would be really helpful. I'm uh, sharing. Okay. Thank you. Can you see? <laughs> okay, can you? Un no, yes. I yes. Okay, great. <laughs> I, will, I will unpause it now. <laughs> there you okay. go. Okay. Yeah, Kavin, can you again click on the... Uh, Which one? Two. The two. Oh. Uh, wait. Once more, it says it's locked. No? No, still locked. No? Nope. That's so weird, but I can't see now. One. Oh, wait, I can't move now. Wait. Hmm. Are you in three or four, maybe? Uh, It says two in front of me, but then I'm on okay. the other side. Does that make a difference? No, no, it doesn't make a difference. I am pressing. Okay, let me. Oh, okay, okay. Now? Yeah, now I can move. What, Just what giving you a heads up, guys. We are done. We're only having nine keys left. Okay. So we have to be more judicious to use. Oh it. shit! Oh, didn't realize that. <laughs> I've been happily distressing. Oh uh, no! That to happen just for you to explore uh, what can or cannot be done. But seven three. <laughs> okay, I'll go press three now. Hey, but what happens? Do we need to find more things? I guess. I think we have found all the all the keys here. So we just have to exit and I have to like, but where is the door to exit? Must be down. It's after four. I'm okay, assuming. I'm going to give you a hint. Do you see a zoom button on your on your uh, screen? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So there. Hannah, didn't explore I... that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Nice okay. Oh, okay. okay. So we have nine. No. So we have nine. So if so you press Hannah, three and then four, we'll be able to go. Yeah. Hannah, you, you need to escape now. I'm, I'll press three. Huh. Okay. Yes. I came. Yeah. Now, excellent. Four what if and you then go near all four, three of so us. Then I'll press. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like we're together. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Yes. 
Okay, now so come. now you guys will have to press for me. Yes. Hurry up! This is the last no, level. No. Okay, wait. Okay. Tell oh me no! Oh, okay, hurry, I'm coming, hurry. coming, coming. Tell me when you want to press. Hey, yes, don't put pressure. Do I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh. Yes. No. Open okay, it up. I press one. Coming, coming, coming. Yes. Come on, let's, let's go. go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, you did it. Shit, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> let's go. Oh, 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 oh,
and we connect it back to their real life and we expect our kids to apply these in their daily activities and their daily uh, routines right so if they even if they're stuck in a very simple problem say uh, they are unable to complete their work they are unable to figure out you know they have too many activities to cover and very little time what can be done is to look at the bigger picture zoom out take a deep breath figure out what needs to be done first prioritize tr- strategize and manage the time uh, in the same order so yeah that's how we connect games with sel because at the end of the day what we were doing was that we were collaborating right and we were communicating effectively and we had to communicate effectively because we had to reach the end goal together so now over to uh sai to just debrief uh, this in terms of the octalysis yes. that we discussed earlier of course of course uh see so <clears throat> Awesome. Uh, sure, guys. Uh, I mean, I would rather like let uh, everybody answer this, like you know, Hannah, Arada, Kevin. Uh, so, like, what elements could you find in the game? You know, that we were just discussing about from the Oculus. Uh, again, the first one being like, you know, like there is a story. Like, you know, we are setting a context. We are saying that you are the first responders. You know, you are. Uh, and you have to pave the way for the other teams to come and you know so that will like we have already put in the player in a very high point and now playing the game for me has a lot more meaning you know i mean hopefully like you guys must have seen the tutorial it, it goes by fast but uh, like you know you might have noticed that you know, if you know you can raise your hand yes you have seen that or no okay sure sure yeah uh and so again like what tells you guys not as uh agada any any bridge can take this you know agada hang out cabin anything else from the hotel okay, so like share 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 the yeah. picture again of the uh yeah. and i'll send it yeah sure that will be helpful um yeah like if i go to it like one by one like in terms of the first point where it was about development and accomplishment um it had like the challenges and that fun element to it like the challenge being that initially we did not uh, see that bigger picture but then this was kind of oh sorry the first point was epic meaning and calling so in yeah. that we knew that the bigger picture was um, that purpose like that uh, uh, entire narrative was kind of set that you know who we are as the characters and what we are supposed to do which is to get out of the um tunnels and then um yeah and also somehow even looking at i feel like even that zoom as a feature is like something that you can take a step back and see that bigger picture of what you're supposed to do and um even uh in terms of like the next point which was development and accomplishment uh that pursuit of making progress like uh, towards collecting all the keys and then um achieving that sense, like that there was a sense of achievement when we figured out what that mechanic was and then let's say there was a door that was blocking our way or that uh, rotating uh, i mean there was like another door that kind of rotates each time so um, those were kind of uh, things that you know was kind of a sense of accomplishment when we figured out what was exactly happening and then we were able to bring all three characters together into the same uh, pipe i mean like in that same uh, area and um, that way we could also have that sense of um, uh, in the next level we kind of had an anticipation of what exactly we were asked to do or like figure out because we know that a new mechanic or a challenge might come up but we can figure it out by cuz we'd be like split into different sectors and um, in terms of like the uh, empowerment and of creativity and feedback so that way we were all talking together like in terms of problem solving initially we were like okay this is where i am and then uh, kavin would also tell me ki what she has seen and then she says that there are some controls to kind of move the doors and then we would coordinate right like uh, the number matching and all that and um as we moved on to another level the training or that understanding also reduced because initially we were a little confused what would be those mechanics and then later on we figured out a little more faster and uh after that uh, even receiving feedback was part of that because when uh, she 
like let's say I was at door two and then she clicks on two, then it unlocks for me. So then it's giving you that real time response of, uh, you know, uh, me being able to move past that challenge. And uh, is it okay if I continue? I mean, it's like sure, I, sorry, I mean, uh, if anybody else wants yeah. to go, uh, <laughs> I got also, yeah. I think for me it was uh, large parts of development and accomplishment mm -hmm. uh, and chasing that goal. Uh, okay, okay, there's one more key left. Uh, how do I get to that key? Uh, and problem solving, like basically some part of problem solving, which is also creativity and feedback uh, to get there. Uh, this is what the control is. Yeah. Uh, like I think that, that was at play. Uh, so again, like I'll just like you know, uh, take this. So scarcity and impatience. Like, you know, like we have mm -hmm. keys again uh, in these three rounds of a gameplay. You can run out of keys, but right. you will, right? So again, so that kind of pushes you to think, think more creatively. And you know, like how will I optimize the use of keys? Like right. somebody is always hanging on the operator, and you're letting the other people pass. Just do whatever you want, and you know you come like you can optimize the use of keys right and right. the same way there is unpredictability and curiosity so again when you join the game of course it was no but as you move along people like more mechanics are introduced into the game uh things might not behave the way you expected right right and uh, the same way like you know loss in the world it's like um, i'm not sure if you guys have seen the pop-up like you know you are running out of time right it kind of, and uh, if you completely run out of the time it can restart the level for you so all your okay. progress that you have made, I mean, the next time it's easy for you, but still the level gets restarted. You know, like all the keys that you already collected, like they will be put back into the level. Go back and collect them again. All three have, of you have to reach the checkpoints, like, you know, reach the end of the level. So yeah. there is a restart mechanics also in the game, right? And we have later books you might have seen in the bottom left corner. You can see right. the other team's score. So actually, like you know, I, I was playing the game, but I was looking at you know, what the other team was going. I was telling Gavin, you know, like we won. Uh, that was a very big deal for me. And it was what what the other team is going. So like that also comes under you know social influence and relatedness. The leader was like you know, understanding what the other team is going. So, and uh, one very beautiful thing about you know that zooming out, you know, we have talked about it. How we need to have a zoom uh, zoomed out perspective. But why does the game take you back into a zoomed in perspective when you when you start moving uh if anybody has thoughts uh, that's a deliberate thing uh why that happens yes. is uh again in, in a very you know in a day to day context when we are actually focused and working on something we lose the picture like you know we lose the big picture okay. that is where again like all these managers and all the uh, mentors and other people uh, step into place but when we are actually working on something our vision is pretty much limited you can you and we want you to take a break and basically zoom out. But once you go back to doing whatever you're doing, you no, know, you you can't just zoom out and you know, uh, keep playing the game. So again, so that is why the zoom function, uh, the it, it works the way it works. Uh, and again, like we have a, a switch, like you know, that turns on the light for everybody. So even that, there are some mechanics you can do together. Like say, like you know, if two of you are together, you will see like a slightly larger portion of the map. So even without a light. But like you know, you can still play the game, but you have to be together. There is a little bit more meaning to it, you know. Like that uh, is maybe for you know, if you have played the game enough, you will understand these mechanics. But everything in the game uh, was thought through, and you know, like it, it has like a slightly larger purpose of pushing the players and you know, uh, into territories where they might not be comfortable. But okay. the overall outcome skill be uh, skill be you know, like how are you communicating? Like, you know, like are you able to play as a team? Like, you know, uh, and are you able to handle losses? And, you know, like, again, opportunity cost. Like, it's like everything uh, that you need, you know, general day to day life, like, you know, that kind of, you know, comes in bits and pieces in the game. So it was fun for me to play, I mean, even while designing and also while playing the game. Uh, so, again, so majorly that's it from my side. Uh, we are done with the presentation. So we'll talk more about this maybe in uh, the second chapter, like, you know, in the next installment of the session. Uh, where we discuss more about white hat techniques, black hat techniques, you know, like again, intrinsic, eccentric motivators. But this framework, you know, it, it is like the very basic foundation of game design. So anybody who's interested in pursuing more of game design, 
uh, be it for SEL games or be it for you know, even hyper casual, like be it for any games, you know, anything in general. So this is like a very good place to start from. So uh, uh, that's why like, you know, even I wanted to start this uh, game design session with this uh, uh, the framework. You know, um, we'll talk more, you know, like as we go more, we'll get more into do's and don'ts of SEL games and yeah, uh, again. So, so you know, I strongly recommend from... guys, if it's possible, you can play another round. There are new joinees, uh, Doug and Rochelle and all. I think that will be fun. And let's put them into our new groups. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. We can definitely do that. Uh, I think this I think this time, Matt, you'll have to host the uh, room. Host the game because just so that uh, no one gets dropped off. I, I actually need to step out in a few minutes. I don't want to be that team player who is not reliable. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> I'm going to have to decline the next game. I apologize. No problem. Although I'm excited to play. All right. Yeah, Doug, definitely. We'll catch up uh, again later. Okay, uh, cool. But, yeah. yeah. Super yeah. fun. Thank you. Uh, you know what? I'm going to share one short round of uh, how the interaction is like between uh, the students. Right? It's just going to be like a 10 to 15 seconds clip. You'll understand what they're playing, right? So they will be playing this game, yeah. right? But it'll be a little uh, different. It's directly from one of our sessions, just a session recording, and you'll see them being extremely uh, interactive. Right? So let me know if you can hear uh, hear it as well. Okay, go cross. Yeah, we're through. Oh, Okay, you can come through. Oh, no, I'm stuck. Let, let us go. Let us go. Look, look at me. That was so easy. My leg. Look at me. It's so good. I'm not really using my arms. I'm like, pull, pull, pull. David! I'm coming as quick as I can. It's so hard to go back and put David. Hurry up. We're running out of time, dude. David, you're doing fun. We don't care. So that was just a short clip into how these kids interact with each other. This is the same game that we were playing uh, earlier. But the way they interact with each other is... I mean, this was the first time that Dante and David were playing together, right? And for them to just interact in a way like they've known each other for years, that's what games do for kids, right? And yeah, so that's about it. And right after this round was over, what Dante spoke about was uh, about trust in team building, right? So those are our bright points, especially when we take games and SEL together. So yeah, that's yeah. about it from our end regarding uh, the play and learn. And I'm going to share a poll with everyone right away. And uh, I think Avinash, you wanted to say something? Go ahead, please. Yes, I do. I do. So that's just my ending remark, which I always say that games actually bring our two selves out. And uh, all the other curriculums, they have been doing a tremendous job. But right now, kids are becoming more into getting into more harder shell. And just by conversations or just by recorded videos, we're not able to get into, you know, their minds or get them open up. So what we have realized is these multiplayer games really break down the walls and they start interacting. They become literally um, a source of receiving knowledge. And all the parents, all the educators we're working with, they have been telling us that their receptivity to these skills and implementation in real life has actually shot up. So, yeah, very, very happy with how things are working out. Yeah, and I'd like to thank Sai as well for the lovely presentation and for the knowledgeable uh, presentation that he's given us. And I, I'm definitely taking back a lot from that, even in terms of how these games uh, really impact the kids and how strategic it is to, do, to design it at the end of the day. Would yeah. love for, thank you, yeah. Sai. And any any closing mm -hmm. comments from anyone? Any thoughts that are at the top of your head? Any questions that you uh, have for us? So uh, I just wanted to add just one point of that. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
feature that you had mentioned, like why it was deliberately like you get to see the big picture and it quickly goes back into the focus. So I thought one advantage of that was that if I was able to kind of see the bigger picture all the time, then I might have not communicated as much as I would. Yeah. Versus, so that way, uh, coming back into like that focused area, it enabled me to talk to my teammates and then it uh, else it would be like I know what where to do what to do where to go it would have been much more uh, like a self thing rather than a group thing so that was also a pretty interesting way to do that feature so yeah yeah and I'd just say, sorry go ahead Matt go, I just wanted to say thank you Saeed for pulling back the hood and showing us the mechanics because we've seen yeah. the inner workings of how you're building this machine to grow kids and, and to give them life skills. And I've seen the workings of it. I, and I've never realized how intricate it is. I saw the team work today with, with what you shared with us. I see this as lesson one because my mind has been totally blown. I'm like, Oh my gosh, everything is a game. Wow, this isn't pre we're taking something that is absolutely prehistoric and 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 taking the all, all of the modern accoutrements of today and adding that so that we can grow kids and have fun at the same time while we're creating an environment that's safe and uncomfortable. It's just so super genius. It's not something that we can unpack in in one one hour session. It's something that we have to give you more time. We we made you rush through some bullet points, and some of those bullet points are life changers. So <laughs> this is the, to me, this is like session one, and there's so much that all of us learn when we are playing together. And and I and I so thank you for for this time, and not just saying hey, it's important to use SEL for games, but highlighting for us what are the important mechanics that are happening happening hum to our humanity and relationally. When we're interacting with each other, you're unpacking those things. You're unpacking the human soul in video games. So, sir, you have my respect. Thank you for this time. It was super cool. Sure. Uh, Absolutely, rather. I mean, we're good to have another session in another two weeks. So we would love for you to join for the uh, for the next session as well. Thank you. I mean, guys ready to hand up. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say that um, just as a school counselor, I can appreciate SEL through games because like it teaches them like the problem solving, conflict resolution, um, effective and appropriate communication. And not only that, just because they're in those like the little cohorts, it can build that relationship building to yeah. skills that most kids that they don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to problem solve anymore, but it can be done and it can be fun. But I take it a step further because I truly believe that we as adults are just bigger versions of kids, which we know that's true. Um, but I can see me using this even with my staff in like a professional development or a staff, staff meeting, because believe it or not, if, if they could see the joy in SEL, because we talk about it all the time and it's just really in a sense become a buzzword, but okay. it really is the foundation of everything that we do. Yeah. And until we realize that the academics will come once the SEL is put in place and is solid. I mean, once we get that yeah. understood, everything else will fall in place. So I appreciate everything that you guys are doing. Thank you, Ms. Kendra. Thank you, Thank you so much, Kendra. If you'd like, we can always host a session for the staff at your end. Yeah, we should definitely do that. I could, or yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll reach well, out. and I, I, I don't want to jump in, but I've noticed Doug, you had some questions. Kendra, Kevin, Radha, if if any of you that want to have game sessions at your school or with some counselors or with the principal with some kids that you have, there were some questions in gameplay. Doug, you and I weren't playing, but we were chatting, and he was asking specifically about the games. He's like, hey. What is the specific outcome that you're trying to drive? Is it purposeful? And that will be part of chapter two of our conversation. Yeah. But um, that's 
I think that's kind of something that we need to um, to be able to unpack, but it will take more time. But it's definitely something that if you guys want to host a session, I'm I'm in North America. You can call me anytime. I'm setting up sessions for superintendents and kids and educators all the time if you want to just play. If you want to know the genius behind what we're doing, you've got to come to these play and learns and get inside Saeed's head and Chelsea's heart. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, man. Sorry. I appreciate it. Um, Avinash and, actually are, and I are scheduled to follow up, so thank you for that. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you for coming to Tomo Club. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Saeed. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank